I'm going to tell a story, and uh, I don't need any advice afterwards. It's okay. I can just tell the story, right? Because I have the cutest seven-month-old on the face of the planet. You may know him. His name's Harrison. He's adorable. He is, you can't tell me otherwise that he's not the cutest little baby. And, not but, but and, he doesn't sleep much. He is uh, testing all the human humanness within me for the past seven months. And so I, I say that I'm hesitant to share this story because after the service, I don't need you to say, well, have you tried a little whiskey on the gums? Or have you put them in the car seat on the dryer for just a half hour? No, 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 no. I don't need the advice, though thank you. So just, just enjoy this story and be thankful that you are sleeping, actually. But if you are being honest... Adults aren't the best sleepers either, are we? Most of us need our nightly cocktail or our milk to get us to fall asleep just right. The air has to be just at 68 degrees, not 67, not 69, 68 degrees for us to fall asleep. Uh, I'm joking and I digress, but I guess that's what sleep deprivation does to somebody. Anyway, so this past week uh, was going on several nights of no sleep, and it was the end of my work week finally, and I was like, oh, can someone die from not sleeping? I was having these thoughts of like, I don't know how I'm going to make it one more night. What happens to people? Like, do we disintegrate? Do we just fall asleep on the sidewalk and eventually someone scoops us up? It was about 4 o'clock, and I just had a few more hours left a few more hours until bedtime, and I had to run one short errand, so I, I pack the kids in the car, and they're both screaming at me, and most parents know that sometimes the best feeling is when you get them both belted in, and you just walk back to the driver's seat in peace. You're like, this is like a nice two-minute vacation right here. It's a little too hot. I won't leave the kids in the car, but this feels good. And so I get in the car, and I'm getting ready to drive. As I'm driving, all of a sudden, I'm like, huh, I wonder what it would be like if I just drove to my parents' house and dropped the kids off and drove to DIA and just booked a flight to a beach somewhere, no luggage to worry about. I showed up, walked straight to the beach, laid in the sand, let myself disintegrate with all the pieces of sand, listened to the ocean. Have someone serve me fish tacos, listen to the calming ocean breeze, and fell asleep, waking up all kinds of sunburnt. God, wouldn't that be great? So I'm driving down the road, and I'm mentally escaping. And I'm just like, man, that would just, that would fill me. That's what I want to do. And then all of a sudden, I, I tuned into the radio. And I listen to the Christian radio because I'm holy all days of the week, at all times, especially when I drive. But on the radio, all of a sudden, they were like, are you a caretaker? And I was like, oh, yes, I am. I said, are you a parent of young kids? I said, God, is that you? I said, are you caring for the elderly? Are you caring for a sick family member? Are you serving another person? Are you exhausted? I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I said, just remember, what you do to the least of these, you do unto me. <laughs> when I say I was snot and tears in that moment, it was, it just all came out, all sleep deprivation. And in that moment, oh, I was so humbled as I'm mentally trying to escape for my own selfish reasons. I remember that those two beautiful little kiddos are the faces of God, that I get the honor and privilege not only to be their mother, but to serve them selflessly day in and day and it's exhausting, but it's worth it because I know they are beautiful images of God. They are stardust. They are precious children of God. In that moment, 
I was humble. And I was like, that's the power of self-forgetfulness. When we get so consumed in our own needs, we get so consumed in how can I make myself happy? What can I do that's going to fill my soul and my tank? What do I want to do with my time? We're such an individualistic culture at times of what can I do? It's about me, 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 me. But when we turn to the gospel, when we turn to the mission of Jesus, it's not about us at all. It's about serving other people. And not only serving other people, but embracing other people how can we learn to embrace them love them just as God loves us and so in this sermon series of learning how to embrace other people especially people who are very different than us especially people who aren't family members or who are members that are a little difficult to deal with at times we're also going along this book You may have picked up a copy. We ordered extras. But uh, by Timothy Keller, The Freedom of Self-Forgetfulness. And you go through this book, and it's really just a long sermon that Timothy Keller wrote and published. And it's it's really a challenge. But there's this phrase that he uses in there, and it's called gospel humility. And it's a challenging term. And if you read the definition on it, you're, you're humbled in all honesty, because humility and being humble is kind of this buzzword that we use. And if we're being honest, most of the time when we hear we are humble, we're still thinking about ourselves. I know that when someone calls me humble, I, I know, I know, I know I'm quite humble. But is about us approaching other people approaching other people who are very different than us, with no agenda of our own, but simply to elevate the other person. And Claire even says in it that we should walk away from most of our conversations, and the other person shouldn't even be thinking about us. We should not insert ourselves so much into a conversation and an interaction with other people that they're comparing their lives to us, that they're thinking about us. Instead, we should elevate them, just as Jesus elevated other people, but especially the people who are marginalized and on the outskirts, the people reaching, just desperate to be seen. Jesus not only saw them, but then Jesus would elevate them in front of other people. Jesus would hold them up and say, you are beloved. You are a child of God. You are my precious gym. And that's how we forget about ourselves. When we turn to the gospel and understand what it means for us to hold gospel humility, not having our own agendas, not inserting our own successes or accolades when necessary, simply just elevating people, humbling ourselves. And this Guatemala mission trip, I am so elated for you guys to go spend time, to take a week out of your life and to go spend time with other people. To pay attention to your own needs for a whole week. To go away from your Amazon cart for a while, go away from your checklist, your to-dos, your successes, your posture, your role here in the world that you've created for yourself. You are displacing yourself. You are forgetting yourself for a week, and you're going to be with other people. And now there are going to be times when you're there, and you're going to be like, God, how long? How much longer do I have to wear this much bug spray? How much longer do I have to sleep on the floors like this? And in those moments, I want you to remember this sermon, and I want you to remember the power of self-forgetfulness. That you wake up and, oh, your back might hurt a little bit. You might, you might miss your macchiato from Starbucks. But I want you to pause. I want you to look around. Look at the people around you. Notice the smells. And be there. Because it's such a short amount of time. But it will transform your life. 
It will transform your heart. You will because you'll say, I got the privilege of sitting with other people, hearing their stories, being with the beloved children of God. Nico came in today and I asked him how he can I see that real quick? And he says, I'm so excited to make these with the kids. These little bracelets. That is forgetting yourself. Not only does he want to make them and give them for them, he says, I want to teach the kids how to make them for themselves. And the joy that this bracelet will bring to all the kids that are to you, Nico, when you're sitting in class this fall, you look down at this bracelet and you say, there's another kid, wonderful child of God, walk by of interconnectedness. And that is the power of self-forgetfulness. Amen.